L87 engine recall. Tiny flaw. Not rods or bearings. People blame big parts. Safety agency and GM confirm. Plan. Finish. Friction. Viscosity. Analysis. I'm Morgan Lane, your safety first car guy. L87 is GM's 6.2 liter V8 engine code. The story sounds wild, but it is true. A microscopic roughness on the crankshaft surface can wreck the oil film and eat bearings fast. Reuters reported nearly 600,000 vehicles in the United States and around 721,000 worldwide. The safety agency also opened a probe into more than 877,000 vehicles from model years 2019 through 2024. GM tallied over 28,000 field reports and dozens of engine seizures on the road. One note from the press said only about 3% of recalled units are likely to have the defect, but that still means real risk. If you drive a 2021 to 2024 truck with the 6.2, check your VIN now. You are watching Recall Roadmap with Morgan, where I break this down in plain words. Today, I'll show the root cause, why thicker oil helps, and how to use oil analysis to protect your engine. Next, the hidden risk on the crank surface. Engine seized. People will blame rods, but not this time. Tiny crankshaft finish did it. I have seen this pattern in investigations. Bearings need a smooth dance partner and a steady oil cushion. When a crank journal is rough, it acts like fine sandpaper. A proper bearing rides on an oil film that separates the rotating surfaces if peaks on the journal poke through that film, metal touches metal. Friction goes from about 0.001 in full film to around 0.2 in boundary contact. That is roughly 200 times higher and that heat and drag shred bearings. In plain talk, a few microns too rough can puncture the oil wedge and start a spiral of wear. The safety agency's summary mentioned issues with connecting rod or crank components and GM engineers traced many failures to out-of-spec surface finish on certain crank journals. In my shop years, I learned to fear tiny finish errors more than big parts. Big parts get blame, but tiny texture ends engines. A profilometer would show peaks beyond spec. Even half a micron matters under load. A rough crank is bad. But how do we protect it without rebuilding the engine? The surprising answer is next. Factory oil was 0U20. Now GM says 0W40. Thicker oil, who knew? Here is why that move makes sense. At normal engine temperature, 0W40 is roughly twice as viscous as 0W20. That means a stronger, thicker oil film that can bridge tiny high spots on a rough journal. GM's recall service tells dealers to use Mobile One Supercar 0W40 and they even update the oil cap and filter to match. The owner's manual once said 0W20 for fuel economy, so this shift is deliberate. We are trading a little efficiency for a lot of protection. In the field, that thicker wedge resists collapse when load hits, so the bearing stays floating instead of scraping. Think of it like swapping from a thin blanket to a thicker pad under a heavy tool. The pad buys time, spreads load, and keeps surfaces apart. Will 0W40 cure a truly bad crank finish? No, but it can slow wear and cut the risk while GM screens engines. So thicker oil helps bridge the roughness. To see exactly why that film matters, we need the basics of lubrication. Next, the oil cushion versus friction crash course. Bearings float on oil. Film failure means metal touch. Friction, then spikes. In a healthy engine, the crank rides on a thin oil wedge. That wedge keeps the parts apart, so the bearing never scrapes the journal. In full hydrodynamic mode, the friction coefficient is about 0.001. That is why engines can spin fast with little heat. If the film collapses into boundary contact, the friction coefficient jumps near 0.2. That is around 200 times higher, and wear climbs fast. 
Start and stop are the risky moments when boundary contact can happen. Once speed and pressure build, a good engine returns to full film. Now connect this to surface finish. If the crank is too rough, the peaks pierce the film, and the bearing cannot stay in that safe zone. Oil choice matters because viscosity supports the wedge. GM's move to 0W40 is all about keeping that cushion intact under heat and load. Even a few microns of lost film thickness can tip you from smooth glide to grinding. Knowing this, we can ask a smarter question. How do we prove if our oil film is holding up in the real world? Next, let's turn to oil analysis. Used oil is engine blood. Labs find metal particles. Trends reveal wear. Sending a sample to a lab gives you parts per million of metals. High copper or lead often signals bearing wear. High iron can point to crank or cam wear. The real power is trending. Track metals per 1,000 miles, not just a single number. Many labs flag copper over about 20 to 30 parts per million, or iron over about 40, as warning zones for many engines. A rising trend, especially a jump that doubles between samples, is a red flag. One classic line in tribology says, the wrong viscosity can have a decided influence on wear. If you run thin oil on a rough crank, the film breaks, and the metals tell the story. Here is my simple plan. After any repair or new engine, change early around 1,000 miles to dump break-in debris. Then sample every 5 to 10,000 miles to build your baseline. If wear climbs, step viscosity or try a top-tier oil. If this helps, subscribe to Recall Roadmap with Morgan for clear, data-first car safety guides. We can watch wear in the oil. Now, how big was this problem out on the road? Next, the recall scope and numbers. Huge recall worldwide. More than 600,000 trucks affected. Thousands of failure reports. Here's the scope. The recall covers model years 2021 through 2024 with the 6.2 liter L87 VOD8. That includes Cadillac Escalade and ESV, Chevrolet Silverado 150, Tahoe and Suburban, plus GMC Sierra 150, Yukon, and Yukon XL. Reports put the worldwide count around 721,000, with nearly 600,000 in the United States. The safety agency had already opened an investigation into about 877,710 vehicles across earlier years, because many reports cited bearing failures. GM documented over 28,000 field incidents tied to engine noise, damage, or oil leaks, and confirmed around 39 cases where engines seized or lost power on the road. Press coverage also noted a key point. Only about 3% of recalled vehicles are expected to contain the actual defect. That small rate still translates to thousands of at-risk engines. Numbers like these tell us the risk is real and the stakes are high. Hundreds of thousands of trucks were checked. So what went wrong in production? Next, the manufacturing root cause and the mid-2024 fix. How did this happen? Manufacturing error. GM fixed it by 2025. GM explained that the problem traced to machining and contamination quality in crankshaft and connecting rod work. A series of improvements were rolled in by June 1, 2024, to clean up the process and hold the surface finish where it belongs. Engines built after that date, which includes model year 2025 trucks and SUVs, were not included in the recall. That tells me the process window was tightened and monitored, and the surface finish is under control again. You may have heard lawsuits name possible suppliers, but GM focused publicly on fixing the parts and giving inspected engines a thicker oil to protect the bearings. From a safety view, that is the right order. Stop the bleed, then lock down the cause. I have seen this pattern before on other lines. Clean the grind, filter the coolant, verify the polish, and audit every crank journal. Production changes fixed it by mid-2024. Still, some owners wonder if engine design or how we drive 
could make things worse when a surface is marginal. Next, let's talk about other contributing factors with a clear, fair lens. Design quirks. Driving styles. Multiple stresses align. Here is the honest read. The root cause is rough surface finish on some cranks, but other factors can pile on. Owners and some techs point to the L87 oiling path with lifter priority and cylinder deactivation. In theory, that could delay oil at the mains during startup for a blink, which is when boundary contact is most likely. Hard towing, steep grades, hot weather, or lots of short trips also raise load or thin the film. None of those alone should kill a healthy crank, but they can amplify a rough one. There are myths too, like hammering the throttle early to seat rings. That only adds stress without clear proof of benefit. My rule is simple. Anything that weakens the oil cushion or spikes pressure increases the risk when a surface is already out of spec. Until you know your wear trend, drive with a warm-up, mind your loads, and keep oil fresh. Lifter oiling and driving style might be side characters. The surface finish is the lead. Now let's put all of this into a clear action plan you can follow today. Now act to stay safe. Change oil early. Analyze it. Data will guide you. Here is your checklist. First, if your truck is in the recall, book the free dealer inspection and follow their repair path. If your engine passes, ask for the 0W40 fill with the updated cap and filter. Next, switch to 0W40 at your very next oil change, even if things seem fine. Thicker oil gives a wider safety margin on any marginal surface. Do an early change around 1,000 miles after any fresh work to flush debris. Then start used oil analysis. Sample every 5 to 10,000 miles. Track copper and iron per 1,000 miles. If copper climbs over about 20 to 30 parts per million, or iron heads over about 40 and keeps rising, step up viscosity or try a premium oil with strong shear stability. Keep listening for knocks, watch oil pressure, and cut back hard towing until your trend is steady. One more reminder from the research. The wrong viscosity can push wear up fast. Use data to guide your choices. With thicker oil and smart monitoring, you control the risk. Up next, a quick wrap and your next move. Tiny texture, big trouble. That is the lesson. A crankshaft's surface finish is not trivia. It decides if the oil film holds or if metal meets metal. GM's response made engineering sense. A switch to 0W40 builds a stronger oil wedge, and oil analysis turns hidden wear into numbers you can act on. We connected the dots from finish to friction, to viscosity, to testing. Reality beat the old habit of blaming big parts first. If you found this helpful, tap subscribe like and share so more owners avoid costly surprises. Thanks for watching. What will you do first with your L87? Ask for 0W40 at service or send a used oil sample to set your baseline. Your plan today can save your engine tomorrow. Stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next one.